In this video, we're going to look at planned obsolescence and the reasons behind why we buy new products to replace ones that are either broken or have gone out of fashion. Believe it or not, most of this is deliberate on the part of the manufacturing companies that make them. At the end, I've also gone over some longer exam style questions with the marking schemes, etc. So stick around. break because they get old and worn out. Some are no longer useful when new technology comes about. Some products are designed to break or go out of fashion. Companies do this to get more sales so that they can cash in. Planned obsolescence can be bad but it also can be good. This video looks at both sides so it is understood. Photograph shows me sat in my very first car in the 1980s. I was age 17 and I'd just passed my test and it was my pride and joy, even though it was rubbish. It lasted me about three years and I couldn't keep fixing it because there was that many things going wrong with it. Eventually, sadly, I had to scrap it. So the poor Maurice Ital became obsolete because in spite of my best efforts to keep it alive, eventually it just reached the end of its useful life. But what if my old car had been totally indestructible and I didn't need to scrap it? Would I still have it now? Probably not. Nowadays, modern cars are far better than they used to be. They've got better features such as ABS, traction control, sat nav. They're a lot safer than they used to be and they're a lot better on fuel as well, meaning you don't have to spend as much to run them. So my old car would have become obsolete because I'd wanted to have traded it in in favour of a new car anyway. Mr. C's car only broke because it got old. The manufacturer didn't plan for this when it was first sold. But many products like tights and light bulbs are designed so that they break earlier than they should. This is no mistake. So companies make more money by making you buy more. Yeehaw! Imagine a pair of tights that you can't break. Seems unthinkable nowadays, but when American company DuPont developed nylon in the 1930s and then made tights from nylon, called them nylons, they were actually strong enough to tow cars with. But they soon cottoned onto the idea that that was a bad thing because if you make tights that are indestructible, it means women only need to buy a few pairs and they'll never ever need to replace them. So they ended up changing the formula of the nylon so that tights did in fact break and that people then needed to buy more. A similar kind of thing happened in the 1920s when light bulbs got better and better and started lasting longer, sometimes up to two and a half thousand hours. Some of the big companies got together and decided that they would limit the lifespan of light bulbs to 1,000 hours, meaning that people, again, would have to buy more. These are both examples of planned obsolescence because they were both designed to have a shorter lifespan than they would have normally had. But it's very clever on the part of the manufacturing companies because they're convincing people that they can no longer do without this product. Let's face it, if you didn't think you needed a light bulb, then you wouldn't replace it once it had gone. And the manufacturers are also very clever at getting the public to trust them because even though they are deliberately shortening the lifespan of a product, people still go back to buy more from them. Right, let's have a look at some true or false questions. Number one, Mr. C's car is an example of planned obsolescence. This is false because the company that made the car didn't design it to become obsolete. It became obsolete just because it reached the end of its useful life. Some people might disagree with me on this answer, but there are lots more products that are much better examples of planned obsolescence where they've been designed so that they break too soon. Number two, the company that made nylon tights deliberately made them break sooner than they should have done so that they could make more profit. This is true and a very good example of planned obsolescence. Number three, light bulbs were deliberately designed so that they only lasted a thousand hours so that they would break and people would have to buy more. This is also true, and again, another example of planned obsolescence. And finally, planned obsolescence only works properly when the companies get consumers to trust them so that they'll go back and buy more. 
This is also true and is very clever marketing on the part of the companies themselves. And sometimes companies don't make products obsolete by the whole product breaking. Take the example of this washing machine. It actually consists of lots of devices all joined together. And if one of them fails, for example, this electronic door lock, then it has to be repaired. And a lot of companies actually plan for these subsystems, as they're called, to have limited life cycles. And that's so that you have to go back to the company that you bought the product from originally just to buy replacement parts. And this planned obsolescence of components is a good way of companies making money. Sometimes things become obsolete because they're just too expensive to repair. Most LED televisions, if the screen breaks, the repair for that job usually costs more than buying a brand new television. Therefore, most people just throw the old one away and get a new one. And sometimes companies design products that are designed to have a limited lifespan, but are also either very difficult or impossible to mend. Look at this power supply for a mixing desk. Because it's not screwed together, the only way you can actually get inside to mend it is by prising the casing open, which quite often would just break it. Therefore, you're left having to spend over £100 buying a new one. Mobile phones are a really interesting one when it comes to planned obsolescence in so many ways. It has been reported that if you need to change any of the components, such as a broken screen, battery or charging port, that these phones are very, very difficult to get inside because they've been designed with screws that only the manufacturer can open. Therefore, quite often, if people are faced with a really high repair bill, instead of doing that, they'll just buy a new one and throw the old one away. Another way that mobile phone companies convince us to upgrade all the time is by constantly bringing out new features. I've got an iPhone SE that's nearly four years old now, and even though it's in full working order, it is obsolete because newer models have come out with newer technology, better features such as 5G being available on the newest ones, faster processors and better cameras. So less desirable products are obsolete, not because they're broken, but because they're less desirable. Planned obsolescence is also built into food. They've all got best before dates so that you don't poison yourself by eating food that's off. Also, in order for medicines to work effectively and keep people safe, they also have expiry dates on, which is just a way of telling you that the medicine has become obsolete after a certain date, so you can replace it. And here is a summary of some of the disadvantages and advantages of planned obsolescence. Right, before I go, I've written you some questions on planned obsolescence. So when the questions come up, pause the video, have a go at them, unpause it, and then I'll go over the answers. Right, the answers are coming up now. To get the full three marks on this question, I'd expect to see a full understanding. You shouldn't just say, oh, it's something that breaks on purpose, because things can become obsolete without necessarily having to break. And that's why I like that definition for the first mark and the two examples that have been chosen. And it does say examples in the question, so you should include at least two. But the two examples that I've chosen have got different ways of becoming obsolete. The light bulb breaks on purpose, whereas the mobile phone will become undesirable. So the whole answer shows quite a complete and rounded understanding. Now, GCSE marking schemes for questions like this often say things like that the candidate shows a full understanding of the advantages and disadvantages of planned obsolescence and they give relevant examples. So that's kind of what you have to do. You have to talk about advantages and disadvantages. You've got to give good points like the ones that I put in the earlier slide and you must give examples to help explain. Also, your writing has to be fairly logical and well-ordered. That's all, folks. See you soon.